Hey, Wood Pillars and Pittsburgh Stullers. You know, I'm running out of things to say about Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. It's the longest weekday word. It's the last weekday alphabetically. It's... Everybody, my name is John and welcome to ADITW, a day in the word, the internet's favorite Bible study. Last week during our study of Hebrews 2, I gave you all a little tip, a little trick that you can use in order to make the Bible a little bit more accessible to you if you are intimidated by the amount of information. You all seem to like that a lot, so this week we're going to tackle another technique. This week we're going to talk about highlighting your Bible and we're going to talk about it through our study of Hebrews chapter 3. Now I know that there's some people out there that don't think that you should highlight or mark scripture. Some people think it's disrespectful to God's word. Others think it's wrong to highlight a section of scripture as better or more important than another. And if you feel that way, that's totally fine. But I am actually a big believer in highlighting and underlining and marking different sections of scripture. Again, you don't have to be, but I actually think it's a really great way to leave little reminders for yourself in the Bible. When I'm underlining during my study time, I focus on three things. Number one, I focus focus on descriptions of God, meaning names or character traits given to God in the scriptures. And what I do when I encounter one of those, I put a little box around it. Number two, I look for promises. These are promises that God makes us in the scriptures, like I will be with you always. And what I do with those is I put a little circle around them. And number three is commands, such as love one another. And whenever I encounter a command in the scriptures, I always underline it. So as we go through this chapter, we're going to look for those three things, descriptions of God, promises, and commands. And as we encounter them, we're going to box them, circle them, or underline them. Sound good? All right, that's enough intro. Let's get started by reading Hebrews chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. Okay, so in this section, the writer is continuing to make the case for just how amazing and great Jesus is. And in this section, the writer is comparing Jesus to Moses. And in verse 1, we read, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. So here, right away in verse 1, we already find our first command when it says, fix your thoughts on Jesus. So we put a little underline right there. And we also have our first description of God. It describes Jesus as our apostle and high priest. So we put a little box around apostle and high priest. Then in verse 4, I found another description. It says, for every house is built by someone, but God is the the builder of everything. So here I put a little box around builder of everything. And then in verse 6 we have yet another description. It says, but Christ is faithful as the son over God's house. Now I want to talk real quick about why these descriptions are so important. I think that descriptions of God are important for us to pull out of the scriptures and put a box around because they help us to get to know who God is. If we know the names of God, and the characteristics of God, then we can get a better idea of who he is, which is vitally important if we want to have a relationship with him. If you want to have a relationship with someone, you need to get to know him. Pretty elementary. But also in verse 6, we encounter our first promise. Verse 6 goes on to say, We are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. And so I put a little circle around the words, we are his house. To me, this is a promise that Christ dwells within us. Now, before we move on to the next section, it's important to mention, like I did last week, that just because we're breaking this down into details, we can't start pulling things out of context. We can't start losing the whole group grand picture that is being drawn here. The only reason that we do this little detail work is so that we can gain a deeper understanding of the whole. All of these promises and descriptions and commands should lead us to a deeper understanding and appreciation for just how amazing Jesus is. Okay then, let's move on now. Let's read verses 7 through 11. Hebrews 3, 7 through 11, 7, 11. 
go to heaven, go to reading. So in this little section right here, the writer is actually quoting scripture. Starting with verse 8, it says, Do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion, during the time of testing in the wilderness. This verse is talking about the rebellious spirit of the Israelite people in the Old Testament. And it is a command, we should underline it, it is a command to not act in that same way. Then in verse 11, we discover a promise from God. God is speaking and he says, So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. So we see here that not all promises in scripture are always so light and fluffy and feely goody. But this one is actually important to unpack a little bit. You see, this promise was a consequence for the Israelites' unbelief. Because they refused to believe in God and follow him, they were not able able to enter the promised land. Now this type of like Old Testament promise might not feel very hopeful to us until we remember that because of Jesus' death on the cross, he turned the tables over so that now even rebellious people like us can enter into God's rest. A promise like this that's sort of wrathful and vengeful, of which we can find many of them in the Old Testament, they can look kind of bleak to us. But actually, they're an opportunity for us to gain an even greater appreciation for Jesus and his grace. Let's finish up now by reading verses 12 through 16. That one doesn't rhyme, but it's still going to be a great section. Okay, so we find a sweet dope on a rope command in verses 12 and 13, and I'm just going to let it speak for itself. It says, see to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Ah. That's good, that's good. And this command here, it's given as a way to instruct us to keep from falling into unbelief like the Israelites did. And this is why I think it's really important to underline God's commands. You see, God doesn't command us just because he can or to make us feel small or as like some big exercise of his power. In fact, I believe that God's commands are not as much an exercise of his power as they are an expression of of his love. God commands us because he knows that through following his commands, we will be brought closer to him. And that is the best thing for us. To kind of wrap up this whole thing, in verse 14, we have a final promise. It says, we have come to share in Christ, if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. This is a promise to those who do not turn away because of unbelief. It's a promise that says if we continue to pursue Christ, then we will share in all he is and has. We will share in his glory. We will share in his power. We will share in his beauty and his love because he is alive in us. And to close this out, let's talk about why promises. Why should we circle them? If you remember back a couple weeks ago, the whole purpose of this book is to encourage struggling Christians. And I believe that there is no better way to get some encouragement in your present than to remind yourself of the promises that God has made in the past. Thank you all so much for watching another episode of ADITW, A Day in the Word. I hope you all are having a great week. As always, hit me up in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going around Hebrews. Was this helpful, this sort of underlining highlight thing? Let me know. I need your feedback. I need to know so I can make the show better for you. That's all I have. I love you all. Keep being awesome.